A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had in need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Edmund Rice was born in 1782 in the town of Cullen in Ireland. Edmund received an education denied to most Catholics. He attended a hedge school and later a commercial academy in Kilkenny. Here he received both a practical and classical education. This was to be extremely helpful to him, not only in his business career, but also in his future role as founder of Schools for the Poor. One of the key differences between Mary MacKillop and Edmund Rice is that Mary was a very prolific writer. Her letters to her sisters gave her a great insight into her thinking and her motivation. This is part of the reason we don't know a great deal about Edmund's early life. The charism of Edmund Rice is to understand that we are judged by our actions. We know that Edmund married a woman named Mary Elliot in about 1785 and Edmund's biographers tell us that they were deeply in love. When Mary was pregnant, she was involved in some kind of horse riding incident and she eventually dies of her injuries. She was able to give birth to her daughter, also named Mary, but it was apparent that the premature birth and associated trauma had left the child with significant disabilities. The story of Mary Rice is somewhat unclear, but we know that Edmund was able to use his resources to provide for her ongoing care. Rice biographer Donald Blake tells us that at the age of 18, Edmund, Edmund became an apprentice in the business of his uncle, Michael Rice, who was well established in shipping supply business in the thriving port of Waterford. Michael's own sons were not keen to follow in their father's footsteps, and so Edmund was given the opportunity of training to manage the business. Soon Edmund became a familiar figure in his uncle's stores, in the warehouses on the quay, on board ship, or as he rode on horseback to buy cattle and farm produce to stock the ships. He quickly won his uncle's confidence and a deep affection grew up between them. The business thrived. Upon Michael's death in 1785, the business passed to Edmund. Soon after Mary's death, Edmund began to focus on the next stage of his life. He had initially thought of joining a religious order in Europe, but the people around him encouraged him to use his wealth to support the poor, uneducated children in Waterford. By 1802, Edmund had sold his business and established his first school, Mount Zion in Waterford. You can imagine the kind of children that Edmund was dealing with. They had spent most of their life on the streets and now were expected to sit and listen in a classroom. Edmund tried to employ teachers, but they quickly resigned as the work was just too hard. Eventually, Edmund was joined in his cause by some like-minded men and they established themselves as a religious order, known as the Presentation Brothers, to teach in the school. As Mary MacKillop would experience in Australia, Edmund came into conflict with the church authorities over who had control over his religious order. 
In 1820, Edmund Rice sought permission from Pope Pius VII to establish a new order to be known as the Christian Brothers, who would spread Edmund's love and compassion for the poor across the world. We know about our historical connection to the charism of Edmund Rice through Brother Tony Smith as the first principal of McKillop Catholic College, but what does Edmund's story mean for us today? Presence is one of the core values of Edmund Rice, along with compassion and liberation. Edmund was someone that was truly present to the lives of others. He was attentive to the needs of those around him, taking time to listen and understand their issues before working with them to ensure their needs for education, clothing and a sense of dignity were all met. Edmund believed that presence is about who you are rather than what you do. He shows us that everyone can be present in another's life in their own unique way. Being present means showing care, empathy and love to those we encounter. It means taking time to understand the needs of others so we can be better people of service. As a member of the MacKillop Catholic College community, how will you be present to those in need?